All right, hello and welcome to Ben's OP Game Show, recorded live, very obviously, every time, it's very obvious, 3 p.m. Pacific time, every Friday, twitch.tv slash thegamefanatics, some of that might be out of order, doesn't matter, on this week's show we're going to be talking about the indie game Sundered, which is a Metroidvania procedurally generated thingamajig, Phantom Dust, which came out of nowhere to be re-released this week, and finally reviewing Prey, which has been a long time coming, and as a little bonus... Played about an hour and a half of the new Fire Emblem, and I enjoy it. But there are some concerns about map layout that they seem very bland and like this is a field with six trees in it. And so I'm hoping that's just the beginning of the game. Other than that, seems like a pretty solid Fire Emblem game. But first, that's just a little bonus. But first, let's take a look at some of the biggest stories of the week. I picked two that kind of piqued my interest. See if I can't click. I don't know if I can click today. Can I? Who knows? So the first thing we got this week that, that really interested me was the news of a mobile Zelda game uh, coming out, I guess, within next year sometime. Obviously, it wouldn't be this year. And the people are kind of getting really excited about this. And I, I think it is something that could be really, really cool and great for the series and etc. I'm hoping more along the lines of Fire Emblem Heroes rather than Super Mario Run. Mario Run, I played maybe about... the de I played the demo of Mario Run, right? And that was enough for me. I didn't even play all the levels in the demo. Totally didn't get it. Whereas Fire Emblem Heroes was something I really got into. And I, I actually played pretty significantly. And it, it, considering that, it's probably the only mobile game I've gotten into that wasn't just, oh, this is Neko Atsume, and you're tapping on cats for five seconds um, and I think Zelda distilled down into a mobile game will be more akin to this bite-sized little Zelda adventures you can call it and what that really is is shrines right that's what Zelda was in Breath of the Wild that's what it'll be in this mobile game I think using an art style very similar to Breath of the Wild meets A Link Between Worlds which would fit in with this or A Link to the Past taking you on these little shrines like oh move this block use this element have items i don't even see you maybe maybe you don't even control link right maybe you just get to pick like these are your abilities here's the room how do you solve it maybe much more of a puzzle game than usually is uh, seen for the zelda series and certainly what we saw a lot of in breath of the wild and that's what i think it's going to be i think people hoping for anything resembling a link to the past or, or whatever are just really getting way too excited for something that's probably not going to happen. If this game has movement with virtual buttons, I'll be shocked. If there's even like the Mario run tap to jump and you're like fighting enemies, I'll be kind of surprised. I, I really do see it just kind of getting into the the puzzle aspect and having you deal with elements and maybe move some uh, gears around and there's, there's a kind of like a hidden object game but more interactive I guess where you're looking at a screen and there's a wheel and you turn the wheel and you kind of like that puts out this fire and you can move around the dungeon like that way solving these little puzzles that's what it, it seems like it would be to me you could obviously use microtransaction for hints and all that garbage that that's of course what mobile games will be and I think the whole microtransaction angle from Fire Emblem Heroes taught Nintendo that that's what mobile wants more. And and I don't... I, this game still could be one of those where you pay $15 and you get it all, but I, I wouldn't be surprised that there was some kind of hybrid system there between Mario Run and Fire Emblem Heroes. But it remains to be seen because also we're getting this year Animal Crossing on mobile. And that will be a big indication of what direction they're going with these mobile games and I hope it's a good direction because I really did like Heroes that's the only reason why I bought the new only reason why I bought the new Fire Emblem is because of Fire Emblem Heroes because it made me realize how much I like those games and they did a fantastic job of distilling it down into its core element in a way that I feel like Mario Run did not because running forward and auto jumping is not Mario it's not that and also this week, just as a little aside, we got uh, 2017's furry game of the year, 
after we get these logos out of the way. What is this? What is this game called again? Sonic Mania? No, the Sonic Mania is the 2D one. Sonic Forces? Sonic whoever. Whoever. They've added in this character creator, which I just love the idea. Sega in recent years, if you follow anyone on Twitter, you should follow the Sonic the Hedgehog account that's just doing dumb shit memes all the time. It is fantastic. And Sega finally is just like, who cares? Let's go nuts. Let's put all the wild Tumblr, DeviantArt, furry memes into our own game. Let's just go into it. Let's just do it. The internet wants it. Let's give it to them. Let's make, create your own character in Sonic. And I, I, I love them for doing this because it's so just dumb. Is so stupid. No one needs to create a character in a Sonic game. Who the fuck? What are you doing? You barely even need to make your own character in a in a kart racing game, let alone a Sonic game where you just jump around. And now they're at this is out of control. And I I really appreciate them just doubling down on being kind of crazy in a really unnecessary way. There's powers and stuff. And also, it should be mentioned this game looks actually kind of good. And that worries me. Anyway, that's 2017's furry game of the year. I don't know what other other game would have been up for that award, to tell you the truth. Let me think for a second. No, I think that's it. It's Sonic Forces. I had that. That was a guess I had. All right, enough of this nonsense. Let's get into the topics of the week that aren't talking about furries kind of vaguely and weirdly. Oh my god, what happened to my mouse? What's happening? In a move that was somewhat of a surprise to me, the Sundered closed beta happened out of nowhere. Sundered is a game I played the alpha of back in January, I believe, end of January, and really enjoyed it. It's a Metroidvania along the lines of any Metroidvania you've ever played. Uh, heavy, heavy on the combat and exploration here. It is large expanses that you are exploring in here they've updated the map system that makes a lot more sense and you're like you're going on a journey this isn't oh i need to go from point a to point b like you really need to go to point b point b is way over there and there's 500 enemies in the way big big emphasis on combat the combat uh plays kind of like someone i was streaming this on twitch and someone said it was like um, subspace emissary in smash and i could kind of see that it it does control a little bit like smash bros where you have an in-air up attack an in-air down attack an in-air side attack you know you have these different moves that you can use in different ways um, to fight the enemies and you need to use them you need to dodge you need to attack it's it's not a super easy game it has that roguelike tendency as well where you'll be killing enemies and gathering these bits and then when you die you go back to a skill tree and you can upgrade with those little bits your abilities. Anything from like, oh, I need more health to more damage to now my regenerating shield uh, increases its size, which is another thing. The game has a, ge a regenerating shield like Halo 1. Like you have your own health bar and then you have a thing on top of it, just the shield. It's such a, I don't think that's like super original, but for a game like this, it's not something I've seen before where it kind of gives you the best of both worlds. That's what I liked about the Halo uh, health system. It's the best of both worlds of the auto regen health and a health bar. Like you still have to focus and pay attention. Your health will go back up or your shield will go back up, but your health won't. And it has that here. And it also mixes it up with things like perks. I only got two perks. I played the, the, the close beta for about four hours. I only got two perks. I don't even remember what the second... Oh, the second one was gathering bits better. But the first one was my shield would auto-regen. It wouldn't have a delay to regen, but it would regen slower. And so each of these perks kind of has their own positive-negative effect to it. 
And there's a bunch of abilities you get in the world where it's like, oh, I got double jump. Now I got, I can dodge, I can double jump, I can uh, shoot a little laser cannon thing. And also these abilities by fighting and, or I think it's fighting three bo mini bosses and then collecting these shards from them, you go back to an ability room and it augments an ability. So the one I got augmented my shield, right? So I, I got the shield and that's great. And then when I augmented it, it morphed the ability to something that can sometimes hit the enemy's back, reflect damage back on them. And that's really interesting. And I think it does a lot of good stuff with that, including when you get like the, the skill tree, I don't know if we'll get to it in the, in the gameplay, but the, the perk tree or whatever we want to call it, each ability you get unlocks a branch of that whole tree. So you might not have anything to level up until you find a new ability. And then now you're upgrading down that new tree. I think that's super interesting. None of the like the abilities in there are kind of the the abilities in that tree that that'll be unlocked from finding an ability. It's a circular sentence. They don't necessarily go back to that shield exclusively. They kind of have, oh, this is health, this is damage. These are the things that are in all of the skill trees regardless of ability, but there are a few things that that just kind of in Increase all abilities. It's kind of weird to explain without looking at that stupid tree. But the game's a lot of fun. It's constantly giving you new enemies or just this variety. Like because it's procedurally generated, the journey to where you need to go is going to be different every single time, and it can be vastly different. You can get screwed over, like I do here, where there's a bunch of guys attacking me. They all have different abilities. I got lasers coming from all sides, and I can't. Like I just start running because it's crazy and that's where the procedural generation kind of gets in the way in my opinion a little bit sometimes it can be much more difficult to get to the objective than it is another time right like much different much more difficult and then you'll, you'll try again and it'll be way easy and you're like well what the hell happened or sometimes the rooms like you look up the map you can see there's a larger square or you can't really see because all my garbage is in the way Anyway, so there's a larger square, right? And then within the square, you're kind of exploring. So you know there's rooms that'll fill out this square, right? And sometimes it will fill out the rooms to where, oh, I just need to go one to the right, and then that's where I need to go. And then other times it's like, oh, now I need to go and make six rooms in this circular journey to get to where I need to go, making something that was a two-minute walk into a six-minute like slaughter fest because you're fighting all these things along the way and, and that can become annoying it needs i think a fast travel system this is the perk tree uh skill tree it, it needs a fast travel system to get to some of these unlockable nodes because getting to them is just so tedious going back there time and time again to go back off that for a second this is the skill tree there are things health luck armor uh, and then there are other nodes that are just like oh, this increases your shield by 30% or something. They're just like larger um, passive. They're all, I think the vast majority of that is all passive stuff. Um, the only active stuff are the abilities themselves and the augments you get um, by collecting those little three shards. This is, you can kind of see the map here. It's a big ass map. I didn't beat this beta. Uh, I know I don't actually know where I needed to go. That's neither here nor there. But it is a lot of fun. It is a really good game. It's coming out this summer in like a month or two-ish, I think. Um, no release date officially. I think they said June. I think that's what their target is. And it has improved from the alpha, particularly the movement system to me felt tighter. It felt a little loose and kind of slippery before. Not in like a super bad way, but now it's, it's definitely better. It's just straight up better. Uh, it's a lot of fun to play and dodge around. It's very fast and frenetic let's just use words uh in a really good way i think that it works super well you're, con you're almost constantly fighting things which can be annoying but the the loop of like fighting stuff getting points and going back and leveling it up is very it gives you very tangible results where oh i started the game and i'm not doing a lot of damage but i just got to the skill tree where I can upgrade my damage and I upgraded it two levels and now I'm doing 50% more damage. And you'll start going, even in this beta, you know, like two hours later, you'll go back through an area you already went into and you'll just be wrecking shop. 
because of how much you've leveled up. And it is a nice feeling of progression with all that. So it kind of has the best of, of all these recent games we've been getting, well, semi-recent, like with Rogue Legacy or with Spelunky and, and all those those indie procedurally generated games, but in this Metroidvania style that feels very like you know rogue legacy is a metroidvania but it's a pretty light combat system this is this is not a light combat system this is a full-fledged i'm fighting a war i can air juggle guys um you know there's a down a smash move essentially like it's got a lot more going on to its combat than than a lot of other other games like this Uh, specifically with the abilities that you get along the way um I haven't even gotten them all in the in the beta. I got them all in the alpha. And they run the, you know, one of us a double jump, so whatever. But this one added actually some interesting things in the environment where like this this whole area is unpowered and you had to get to the node to power the sector. And then once it was powered, these lifts activated, doors activated that you couldn't get through before, and it it added another layer to the exploration that wasn't just finding a mini boss and that was the next checkpoint of sorts. It, it added a thing of like, oh, I didn't get to the boss or I didn't get anything, but I at least activated the generator. And now I don't have to do that. I can go back to that area and uh, get to this door that stopped me before. And it does a good job. Even with the procedural generation, there are um, choke points, I guess we'll call them, uh, where like this is where a shortcut is. Like this is where a shortcut is. And as long as you get there and open it up, you have that shortcut. And it does a really nice job of having those shortcuts, which is crucial. I just wish you could fast travel, not to all of them, maybe to some of them. <laughs> like, cause it's just tedious to walk to some of these places, especially when you start getting attacked by 17 laser man and the giant beetleborgs and these little electric squid billies, it's a little much sometimes. But still a lot of fun, and I think when it comes out, it's. I hope it kind of takes people by surprise and people start talking about it, because not a lot of people are. Uh, I forget the game that they made before this, but it was a game you've probably heard of, but it's not not a very huge game. It was, it was a it was a Viking-themed... It has a Viking-themed name, too. It's not a, it's not a different game, and it doesn't... It looks similar-ish. But it doesn't play similar at all. Anyway, that's thundered. I, I really enjoy it. Fun time. Good action. That's good enough for me. I question how long this game's gonna be, because at this point I've spent probably seven hours between the alpha and the beta, and I don't know, like, does it just restart each level and now I level up again with the perks and the skill tree? I don't know, but kind of an infinite Metroidvania in a in a sense. It's very compelling to me. Very, very compelling. There's too many lasers, though. I think they need to tone down the lasers. Just, there's a lot. There's a treasure chest, if you're running. Too many lasers. Oh, that's something I should mention. The laser is red when it's safe and charging, and green when it's dangerous. That doesn't make sense, okay? I don't know if that's a colorblindness thing. I don't know if that's even opposite of what people that are colorblind would want. I don't care. It makes no sense. Green is not a dangerous color, Barn like full stop. It's not a dangerous color, so fix that. If you could fix one thing, fix that. Oh, I just realized the next thing is Phantom Dust, which doesn't even have gameplay for like ten minutes in the recording. <laughs> Eh, whatever. Ow, God, that's my toe. Ow. (laughs) I'm dying. My toe. Let's, Let's talk about that weird mutated insect. No. Let's talk about phantom dust, which came out 
all of a sudden, I'm pretty sure surprising literally everyone that just, just out into the world, the cult classic Xbox game, which I always wanted to play on the original Xbox, but never, you know, just never had the, the chance to. I There's something very distinct in my memory about, I think, X-Play kept having, like, they kept rerunning the episode with Phantom Dust on it. I don't, I don't know why, but it's something that just sticks in my brain. And it always sounded like something that would be right up my alley. And I'll get why. I'll get to the why of that in a second. So here's the little story setup. The game takes a while to start. It doesn't feel new. It is very old. Um, that's fine. Whatever. The game looks pretty good. It is just a remaster. It's just an upscale. It is very, very strange what they've done here. The game's free. That's t- that's strange thing, number one. Number two, it's very obvious playing this for... I only played an hour, right? And maybe I'll play some more. I don't know. Um, but this, I'm taking this as a demo, like a demo. This is my little taste of Phantom Dust. Uh, it becomes clear kind of why you wouldn't make another game and why the other one it was canceled or was it canceled i don't even know microsoft's just being weird Uh, anyway well we'll get to that in a minute it's got cool style it's got a cool story setup interesting whatever right but once this this 10 to 15 minute goddamn way too long opening ends which could be in six to eight weeks before i'm even done talking about it the long opening. Once you get into the gameplay, it's very limited. And I understand things are slow to start, and so fine, right? But even after the first couple matches, it starts being really weird. So you you collect these orbs in the match. And the matches are pretty much uh one on two, two on two, two on one, whatever, you know, like that's that's the basic setup. Um as in so far, I have not seen in so far. I don't think that, I haven't seen just grunt enemies, right? Like there's nothing that you can kill in one hit, and they're just there to be fodder. It's always a duel against an enemy, and that's fine. But that's that's a different experience, right? That's a very different thing. It's a dueling game. It's not a, a third-person action adventure game where there's there's you know, this is the mid-level guy, and this is the low-level guy to fight. This is the boss. Like, it's it's a duel every time. And that's fine. What's not fine is is have these little orbs. So I'll, I'll get back to the orbs. There's orbs on the battlefield, and they're red or they're blue. That's the ones I've seen so far. Maybe there are other ones. I don't know. That's neither here nor there because of my, my problems with it. So the orbs, when you walk over them, they'll tell you, oh, this is uh, unlimited use. This is the name of the skill. This is if it's a mid-range, close-range, far-range. And and a couple other things about it, right? The problem is you can't really read all that and understand all that super quickly when someone's throwing fireballs at you. But that, that's only a minor grievance. The other grievance is now you got 16, like, okay, not 16. Let's, 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 cue, let's, let's call the exaggerations. So you can have four attacks, one to each face button going on. Now, some of them are defense skills, and defense is very important. Obviously, you can deflect fireballs back at people. You can just block their attacks, etc. The problem starts coming when I got an attack called something vacuum, something along those lines, right? Which is an attack that is a close-range attack that hits with a sword, effectively. That's what it looks like, a sword. What is a vacuum about that? It doesn't make any sense. And then you get something called a laser, the laser attack, which is like a little pew pew blast that that has an arc, like a weird arc that's for super far range. And it starts being like, why are these things named so bizarrely? Like I, I can never get down exactly what this does. Like what's the difference between a fireball and a gunshot blast and like it's just I need like a shooting range to figure all this out and the whole time I'm playing it I'm getting heavy uh Lost Kingdoms 2 
and Folklore Vibes, two games that I love. I love to death those games, and I will talk your ear off about how if they ever make a 3D action-adventure Pokemon game, it should play like Folklore, because holy shit, that makes a lot of sense, and you really should look into Folklore just for five minutes and see that, wow, that would be really cool in the Pokemon universe. But I digress. The deal with those games is in, in uh, Lost Kingdoms 2, you get a card deck, right? And you'll have a certain amount of uses for each card in your deck, and you can cycle these different cards in and out and use them with the face buttons, right? And you're using them to fight all different types of enemies with different elements and attributes and all of that. And it all works pretty well. It's also a From Software game. Fun fact. Which was the first From Soft game I loved. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay. It's <laughs> but it's weird here because you're just dueling. And these characters you're fighting with in six to eight weeks when the game lets you play, the characters you're fighting with are straight up running around like just psychopaths, literally doing stuff like this. They just do weird stuff, and they, somehow that makes them dodge your abilities. It's not fun to, like, run after someone, and they shoot you with a fireball. You block it, and then they teleport away. The rules aren't quite set up. Some things are like, oh, this is really this is a really cool ability. It's single use, though. It's like, well, I'd kind of like to have fun and use all these abilities and have a an in-depth combat encounter, but everything has to be a duel, so it's this guy with 15 HP that I'm fighting, and I need to hit him six times, and I win. And that's just not as fun as the adventure you can go on in a Lost Kingdoms 2, which I'm just going to keep talking about, where you're fighting all these different creatures, and you're finding new creatures that turn into the cards you're using, and you're, you're setting up your deck. And I'm sure there is a card deck, and I think I stopped right before that point in Phantom Dust, oddly enough. But it just is missing all of that for me. It's not... It's not quite there, really. It just feels so kind of half-baked for what I want, which is more of the folklore type of game. And those games, you know, folklore came out later than Phantom Dust, but Lost Kingdoms 2 came out around the same time, around 2003, 2002. Um, So, like, this game comes out at that same time, too, and it has a cool story and setup and all that, but... Man, is it is its combat rough and old and it, like it has these hooks though that you could I can see why people love this game. I can really see it. I can see like oh if I have this laser attack and they get really far away, but if they get close I can do this and I can block this by like that's really cool. The whole rock paper it's not even rock paper scissors, but it's the if this then that kind of mentality of all the moves. I see that. I get it. But it just doesn't quite work. It's all too confusing in an unnecessary way just like that move i said was called vacuum something that was a melee attack i don't i don't know it might not even be called vacuum i really hope it is doesn't matter and then the moves you can pick up on the world will regenerate in the same spots but they will regenerate different things and so you can get totally screwed over where you get a bunch of like this guy i have to fight via range well here's three melee moves and a barrier and i'm like well I guess I'll use all these moves because they're single use and I'll wait for the orbs to respawn and now, and now I'm running back and forth like an idiot just like the AI is. Like the AI will start to like go up bridges and do weird things and they like go up, go back, go up, go back and like you turn a corner and then they go back and then you, you go back around and they turn around and it's like is this weird cat and mouse game like they're trying to get you in the right spot and you're trying to get them in the right spot and if you're both trying to do that at the same time, you're just shuffling back and forth. It's just very strange. Um, that being said, I, this is obviously for the fans. This is obviously a goodwill gesture move, and it is really bizarre. I don't know why it's free. I don't even know why it exists. I like that it exists. I think every game should uh, be playable like this, you know, just 1080p on a PC or on an Xbox, like whatever. I think every game from that era should be um like that i have no problem with that it's just not a not a real game for me and it has a lot of weird problems i think uh not the least of which are all the characters have these giant lips 
like cartoonish lips. Also, the guy you're playing as, completely uninteresting. But the main villain lady, super interesting. <laughs> I want to play as her, but I've, instead I have to play with Big Lips McGee over here. Also, I've been talking about this game for 10 minutes. I'm still not playing. I'm still not playing the game. And you're still not really playing the game for like another 20 minutes when you're fighting. I'm trying to drag this on so we can get some footage of the stupid game. But no, I have to talk to this man and pick a name for myself because everyone's forgot their name in this amnesia society. I don't know. The game's fine. Lost Kingdoms 2 is a much better game. That is a fantastic game. Even, maybe even better, maybe just newer so it's easier to get to. Folklore, which I have right here. Folklore, PS3. Go play it. I think IGN gave it like a 9 or something. It's a good game. It's a, it's a good game, right? Published by Sony. 720p. I, don't know, I didn't really learn anything from the back of the box. Anyway, that's Phantom Dust. Oh, I can finally move around. It only took 15 minutes. <laughs> I, I'm picking on it. I'm picking on the game. It's not that big of a deal. Because I certainly wasn't playing anything 15 minutes of the new Fire Emblem. I'll tell you that right now. That guy's in the way. It's a game. This is this is at this point, Phantom Dust is a game that exists. It's not for me. It's fine and it's free, so I think everyone should play it out. There are achievements. Giant shrug. For what is probably the final time for a little bit, we'll talk about Prey yet again. Um, this will be the full review, kind of summation, summationing, sure, all of my thoughts uh, from my pre, my copious previews um, of the game. This is my game of the year so far. Uh, I really enjoy what it's doing, taking Bioshock even further people have compared it to system shock 2 and i really feel like i missed out because system shock 2 might have been my fucking game of a lifetime uh but it's it's too late to know now because now i've played prey and i can't go backwards in time yet so what what prey does so well are the choices and a lot of games specifically i'm going to compare this a lot to bioshock a lot of Things like Bioshock had that, oh, you can do this, you can, oh, if there's water on the ground, you could zap it with your hand. And, and it felt so contrived and kind of unnecessary, and it was, it was very limited even in that respect. And what Prey does is it has these options, these choices you can make in basically every aspect of the gameplay. Like, it's not just picking a skill on the skill tree that's your choice like every choice matters what weapon you're going to use in a situation it matters right and it, it it's kind of crazy like you could go through this whole game using the shotgun and just fabricating ammo just blowing everything up right or you can stealthily like get the perk that lets you walk and run silently and now you're running around with a wrench in hand, just getting surprise attacks, surprise sneak attacks on everything. And then if that doesn't work, switching to the pistol and shooting them. It, it comes down to every single thing here. It's like this control panel was broken, right? And it was shooting electricity everywhere. Now I can shoot it with the glue gun, which nullifies the electricity for a limited time. And I can repair it if I have the repair ability. Or I can just shoot it with the glue gun and walk past it. Or... There's like I use this example, and I'm writing a review for the for the Game Fanatics right now, and I use this example in the review where there's a locked door, right? How do I get into the locked door? Well, 
maybe I explore further in this area and I find the key and I use the key to get to the door, right? Or I get to the door, I don't have the key, I hack the door because I invested skill points in there, I hack the door, winner, winner, chicken dinner, right? Or there's, there's a window right at the, you know, right next to the door, I break the window, I can't fit through it, but I have a dart gun and I can shoot the computer with the dart gun to allow access into the room to open and unlock the door. Or through that same window, I can transform into a nearby coffee cup and will squiggly wiggle around as the coffee cup in through the hole in the window and then pop back out into the room. Or I can go around back and notice that there's a blocked entryway, but I need to be able to carry heavy objects, right? So if I use those skills, I can pick up all the heavy blocks and move them out of the way and then I can get into the room. Or I can use a recycling grenade and throw it at the blocks that need to be destroyed or lifted and then the recycling grenade recycles all that stuff and I get free materials and then I can go through the door. Or I notice there's a, like a little terrace on the outside of this room on the upstairs of it and I use the glue gun to make a platform up the wall and I jump up the wall and get onto the second floor of it. Now I'm in the room. Or I notice some scaffolding that leads around the corner and so I glue gun up to the scaffolding. I Is that what it's called? I don't know, whatever. And I crawl around on these pipes or whatever, and I find a hidden matron, uh, maintenance entrance, not a hidden matrix. And I go over there, and then I'm in the room. And it's like there are a lot of games that you'll see E3 demos of, and they'll talk about, you can do this way, you can do that way. Whoa, it's so exciting. But Prey is, is the realization of that, and it, it lives up to it. Like that example I gave of that door is every like there is a room like that in every level of this game if not more than one it's all over the place you'll unlock a door and then you'll realize just by walking around in that room like oh i could have had the key to this you'll find a key card for it later right or oh i could have had this ability i could have gone in through this hole i just don't have that ability or i don't have that ability but i got into this way and it's it's so cool to see all those layers in this map you know it, this is a a game that every anyone who wants to like get into game design or do level design in particular needs to play. This is the smartest level design I've seen in a game in like the longest time. It is insane the amount of detail. You'll be playing this game for hours. You'll be in a place you've been in for a couple hours and you'll notice a little detail on the wall and, and you'll realize that's a, that was telling me something. That was telling me I could have gone this way. There was a body I found. Well, I didn't find it. I, I used the little computer to, to navigate to find one of the crew members, right? And I was like, I don't know where he is. Oh, he's suspended up here. And I'm like, well, how would I would have how would I have known? But the all the clues were there because there was a blood stain on the floor. And if I paid attention, I would have noticed blood dripping from the ceiling, and I could have looked right up and saw this person. And it, all the details were there. All these things we're always there that secret hidden passageway they're there you just have to look for it and it's one of those things that that's insane every single part of this game just begs to be mulled over and just really the fine tooth comb examined this is and i think i mentioned this last week what breath of the wild did for the macro for seeing that hill and going over there and exploring and really getting that joy of exploration in a vast world prey does the opposite and it takes it into the micro level of every single room every single file cabinet could be hiding something there could be something under that there's something on this computer that unlocks a door that unlocks this other thing over there that there's a room just if you just looked if you just looked over there like so many games promises but never deliver on it but there were many times in prey where i looked up and said like i think i can go there i don't know if the game wants me to go there but i'm gonna go there with the glue gun i'm just gonna mess around and get there and it does it so phenomenally well and it does it in a way that that eclipses anything close to what bioshock did particularly because bioshock starts out as a slow you have the wrench you have a pistol you get a shotgun it's it's a methodical experience and then it kind of overflows into silliness of, 
well, now you got this gun, now you got that gun, now you got this ability and that ability, and you're killing all these guys. But Prey never got that way to me. In fact, by the end, I was wishing for more combat because I do really enjoy the combat. But because it was like, there was there's so much so many lulls in this game where you are just alone in this decimated space station fighting for survival and i i do th- we'll get to difficulty i guess because it, it's not i don't think it's a very difficult game but you are fighting to survive and scrounging around and that's what's so important about the exploration is that you need to pick all these things up because you want to craft with them and it's not a stupid like i don't craft a lot in video games because it's like you need three whiskey bottles this is two fingers not three uh, you need you need a banana peel, a paper clip, and this to, to craft this thing. And I'm like, man, I don't know where to get paper clips. This is annoying. But what Prey does is it takes everything in the game and allows you to recycle them into four components. So it doesn't matter what it is. All that matters is that you were trying to explore the world and find objects. And so you found objects, you've recycled them, and you can make them. And you know what you can make in the game? Anything. Anything in the game, if you have the fabrication plan for it, you can make. And so this choice that I'm talking about, the choice of how to explore and how to get into rooms, goes not only into that, not only into the perks you can pick, which affect that, but they also affect combat, and they also affect crafting and what you want to make. Like like I was saying, you can just be shotgun man and build a ton of shotgun bullets and just wander around with a shotgun. And it'll work. And it'll be fine. If you want to never learn a Typhon, which are the alien abilities, you don't have to. I didn't. I know what all of them do. I see the enemies use them. Um, I didn't. I stayed full human. And there's a playthrough that go the other way. And to transform into a little cup man. And, and waddle through doors. And be able to phase shift through things. Um, the one ability I do get was uh, slowing down time. There, there are so many different options. Like... Uh, there's this enemy that's like a floating blob and towards the later end of the game you'll sometimes see this floating blob with three turrets around it and what you can do because the turrets are going to attack you now they're they're being controlled by this blob right is i can throw emp grenades and disable the turrets right and then i can switch to a stun gun stun the flying blob switch back to the shotgun slow down time blow it up with the shotgun by that time, the turrets are out of their funk and they're facing weird directions. I can hack all of them so they don't shoot me and I'm fine. But I could have handled that situation, that situation, and every single other situation of combat in the game totally differently. I could have set up my own turrets and had them have their own little battle. Right? I could have had another ability that you can uh, phase shift and leave a temporary um, like ghost image that they'll think is you. And do that. I could throw any other grenades. Like there's a Typhon grenade, which basically just attracts all the aliens to that spot. And I could set up a trap for him. Oh, there's a fire over here? Let me throw a Typhon grenade over here. And the, that man's going to light himself on fire because he's stupid. Uh, there, there are a bunch of different options for that. The entire game is riddled with these choices. And even though I'm not making all of them, just the fact that I can see them. And I can look at an encounter and go... Well, what works best for here? What should I do? What if I try this? And it all works out. There are moments of, of like, that moment everyone will talk about with uh, Breath of the Wild where, oh, I put a sword down and it, it'll, it carried the electricity and completed the circuit, right? Because it's a metal suit. Like, stuff like that happens in this game. I was fighting, I think it was in this, this next room, not in this gameplay, but it was in this next room where I was fighting a uh, phantom guy let's call him steve i was fighting steve and he's electrified right oh maybe i can use emp grenades to disable their electricity i didn't even think about that anyway there he's electrified and i started fighting him and i'm like man i'm getting zapped and i looked down and i realized i'm on a metal grating and his electricity was electrifying the entire platform i was on so i had to leave where i was it does that so much better than than bioshock did of having like i guess there's water here like you never you never have to deal with the elements. It never forces you to deal with the elements, but they're there. There'll be pipes that are flammable that in the heat of a battle, like they just start bursting and now there's fire everywhere and you have to deal with the consequences. It's such a world that is built upon all the systems. It never feels like fake or forced. I mean, you're going into um, cargo bays 
and uh, like here's the mess hall and all that stuff like it is a space station it is a two scale i mean i guess it it would have to be two scale they're the one who made it of a space station there is no uh there's no area left for the imagination you go to every area of the space station and i think that is an incredible achievement here the game beyond all that is just a blast to play i loved all of it i loved all of it to, i'm slowing down time and shooting things up with the shotgun upgrading abilities that's my one one complaint is i really think if you're gonna play this slowly and hoard ammo and do all that stuff you should turn up the difficulty because i played through on normal and you end the game like i was recycling grenades 10 at a time just because i had them if i wanted to i could have fabricated like 30 40 neuro mods which are basically your skill points <laughs> like i could have done it i could have just given myself a ton of ammo i tried not to i tried not to i tried to conserve everything right and so i think a higher difficulty would have been would have been better for me to, to play on um because i i scrounge around so much but if you're not going to do that normal will be fine and you'll you'll find enough bullets and you can always make them to the fabricator I should mention, I have it uh, listed on here. There are some negatives. I will say the map isn't great. It isn't terrible, but it, it suffers from a problem of, oh, I want to go back to, I want to go back to Psychotronics, but I don't have the map of that area. So if I, I want to see, I want to see the map of it, right? But I can't see the map of it unless I go to that area. And it just seems like a weird thing that a lot of games do where I want to see the map of that area. Why can't you just show me that map? I've been there before. Let me see my map of that area without me having to go to that area. That's a that's a weird thing. I did have some glitched quests. Um, where it's like, go oh, find so-and-so. And I'm like, well, so-and-so isn't anywhere. <laughs> so, and so, goodbye. Like, it, it's just not there. Um, the enemy variety is kind of limited. There's a lot of the mimics. I didn't talk about the mimics, but... They're the ones that mimic things in the environment. They provide some jump scares, but um, they're fun to fight. I, some people complain about the wrench combat where it feels like you're wildly swinging. I think that adds to the experience, and I think you do get the hang of it pretty quickly. So I don't, I don't really understand that that complaint doesn't work for me. Um, anyway, enemy variety. So those are the mimics. There are greater mimics. There are the phantom, phantom, phantoms. I don't know. And then there are. See, I, I, I disabled, that's what I did there, was I disabled him with a, with a grenade that disables um, their abilities. Then I stunned him so he couldn't move. I slowed down time and shot him with a shotgun. Fucking love the layer of all these abilities you can do. Anyway, there's a little phantom, 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 phantas. And uh, there's fire ones, electric ones. There are little wraiths that like shoot weird things at you. Um, there's the giant nightmares of which I don't think are very intimidating at all because <laughs> I would basically get a uh, surprise attack on them, slow down time, and just pump them full of lead. But I mean, that's the thing I could do. And I also could have set up turrets. I could have done all these things. I so, it's so cool to see all the different ways you can handle this game. And oh my god. The joy of exploring. I, don't know, I know I said exploring weird, but the joy of exploring in this is unrivaled to me. Uh, it, it harkens back to Bioshock, but what Bioshock was, like how, how you remember Bioshock, because going back to it now is not the same. This is how I remember Bioshock being, and it does it better. It does it in a 30-hour game. And it, going back to that pacing thing, I might have dropped the point early, it never becomes a shooter where everything's fighting you. I've heard... Um, complaints of people saying there's too much combat in this game and I'm like I don't know what you're talking about there are 20 minute stretches where I see no one where I am just looking at every single nook and cranny in the room and trying to piece all this together looting everything going back and recycling stuff like if you think there's too much combat in this game you're playing it too quickly I, I think um, you're not looking at everything. You're not finding everything. You're not trying to see the different ways because seeing the different ways you can do stuff will lead you to new areas, will lead you to more weapons or ammo or just learning things about the game in the same way that Breath of the Wild did that, like weird little tricks you can do. And I, I love, I fucking love this game. I, I think it's it's something very, very, very special. It also has the rare compliment for me that the perk skill tree 
is filled with things that are useful and relevant and aren't just like, oh, 5% the pistols, I don't know. I hate skill trees like that, but this skill tree is phenomenal. Like, it is really oh, just top notch. I, I love it. Um, oh, let's go back to the complaints. I think some of the zero G stuff is just fine. Um, what was the thing? Oh, the last couple hours of the game. So let's say the last six hours of the game for me, half of it was um, side quests that I never did or completed and I'm, I'm going through and trying to do them. And the other half is a late game fetch quest that it really isn't very good. It takes you all over the the map in a way that's just kind of annoying. And I ended up running away from a lot of stuff. I was like, I don't need to fight you. It's not interesting for me to fight you at this point. Um, because the enemies you had to fight were these robots that are just annoying. Um, so I'm like, who cares? Let me just leave. Uh, so, so the end of the game kind of, it kind of withers and shrinks a bit. Um, and that's unfortunate that the last maybe, I don't know, maybe two hours of the game is just backtracking and not very compelling. Uh, it did win me back. Uh, not at the ending, but the after credit scene, which gave me chills, literal chills. I love, there are like two, there are at least two reveals in it, and I loved them. I didn't see either of them coming. I could have guessed one if you'd probed me and asked me a bunch of leading questions. I probably could have guessed. But the implications of everything, everything that went on in the game comes to a head in this ending, and I loved that. I, I just was floored because I was playing this game and I was trying to beat it. I'm like, I'm running around in these stupid fetch nonsense back and forth to the same areas. I'm like, this is stupid. And then I hit that ending and you know, it doesn't end on a boss fight. It just ends, has its little ending, it has the credits, has that scene. And I was floored. I'm like, I love this. I love, 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 love this game. I think Prey is very special. I think Prey is going to get robbed. It's going to get so robbed by, by Zelda and whatever else comes out. Uh, the rest of the year. Not Red Dead, because there's no way that's coming out this year. This is my, this is my, I don't know what could beat this. I do not know what could beat this for my game of the year. I, I love, this so close to a perfect game to me. So, like those complaints I had, so minor. So, so minor. Did I mention 32 hours to beat it? I don't know, I'm looking at my notes. It's fantastic. It is just fantastic. A one-of-a-kind experience that like now I, I can go back and be like this area is smaller like when you first get into it every area is just this giant thing and you're like looking around with your little pistol like, what do i do what do i do and you're you're like searching around the corner like, i guess i'll go into this room and and see what's here and you're like oh i'm mimicking you're whacking on it and, you're like, and it has that it has that for like 15 hours and i fucking loved that i loved it so much Prey is very special, very, very special. This is a game, um, like I love Bloodborne and Bloodborne is one of those games that's like a pillar of this generation and right next to it, we have the next pillar. Well, Witcher 3 can be a pillar too, it's fine. And that pillar is Prey. It's right up there with one of the best games I've ever played. Not only one of the best games of the year, one of my favorite games of all time. If it wasn't so busy this year, with games, I'd be right back in on a nightmare mode playthrough. Right back in. Just, it's phenomenal. It is a phenomenal, it is a triumph, it is an achievement in so many ways. I will repeat again, anyone who's interested in game design in any facet, any way, needs to play this game and really look at its systems because it's so smartly done. It, it's it's incredible. It's an incredible game. And that will be the end of the show. No one's here in the comments to challenge me on Prey being the game of the year, so it already wins. Yay, goodbye. <laughs> That's one of my rare instances of using the lean. <laughs> uh, I never used the lean. That's my tip, too. Upgrade that shotgun. Upgrade that shotgun's damage, because it can get up there. And you're doing hella damage. Anyway, that's the show. Every Friday, I almost forgot what day of the week it is. Every Friday, 3 p.m. Pacific time, twitch.tv slash the game for I'll do the show. Next week is going to be Fire Emblem. And 
shit, what's the name of that game? The one that Sega's putting on PC again. Vanquish. Probably Van. I think that comes out next week. And maybe that crashing game. There's a lot of games. There are too many games uh, this year. I think we could stop. We could just stop. Like June, we don't need any games after June. We're good. We're good. We got enough. We got all the games we need. Got all them all. We got all the games. Well, come on. All right. Merry Christmas. Happy birthday.